Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under, because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we're Catholics Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger Welcome to the Terry and Jesse show God bless you. We have a special guest, Father Charles Murr, coming in today to talk about the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church. Why? We want to give fundamental teachings on something so sacred uh, that uh, that's what Father Murr is going to do with us today. And we're going to point out that we need to bring the sacred back into the church. Uh, That's what Cardinal Seurat said in his Day is Now Far Spent book. And I think uh, the sacraments are just that. But I also uh, want to give you some good pro-life news coming up after the good news of Jesus and the gospel. And uh, the reading from Matt, from uh, Mark today is short, but it, uh, it gives the authority of his apostles to, uh, to go out and uh, fight and drive out demons. Because here's what the greeting from the Holy Gospel according to Mark says. Jesus went up the mountain, summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the 12, Simon, whose name is Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Bagarius, that is, the sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, and Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. That uh, gospel is not just giving you know, the, uh, our priests the power to drive out demons, but it's a very clear statement right here saying that. He says, and they might, he might send them to preach, and to have the authority to drive out demons. Think about that in exorcisms. That's the power the church got from Jesus Christ. All right, now I'd like to bring in, uh, well, before I bring in Fulton Sheen, I just want to say that this reading from Fulton Sheen, I I found is so profound, I thought, well, wow, we need to use this for a, uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Engineer to raise my camera up. I think you're you're only seeing me, my bottom uh, chest. I don't think I'm getting in the picture here. He'll fix that for you for those. YouTube people. Uh, the reading from Fulton Sheen, but let's bring Fulton Sheen into the picture first on that choo-choo train. It's a Friday, so they might be running late. All right, full Sheen ahead here. This is taken from his book, My Uncle Fulton Sheen. I read it yesterday, a quote there, but they have some really good quotes. Here's what Fulton Sheen says, and this is a, this is a fundraising letter here. Bishop Sheen says, one of the most practical ways of assuring that we will always have enough is to give and give and give in the name of the Lord. (laughs) Similarly, the most rapid increase in the love of God can be obtained by being totally generous with our neighbor. You know, I think of what Bishop Sheen did on Life is Worth Living when he said, you got problems, go out and help your neighbor. So many of us are down and trotted because we are living really a life centered on ourselves rather than on serving God and his children. So that would be my message on that particular quote. I believe I've got Father Murr coming on in a few minutes, but I just want to remind everybody today, President Trump, again, was the first president to speak at the March for Life just now, today, and he says this. Now, this isn't Cardinal or Archbishop or the Pope saying this. This is a former playboy, okay, who lived a wretched life, and now became the president of the United States. I got to believe people praying for him. It has an effect because he says every life brings love. Okay. I didn't hear the former president say that. Nobody has said that. And for him to be present at the March for Life speaks volumes. 
Now, I want to just say this, and you can condemn me, anybody, for bringing this up, but I'm going to bring it up because as Catholics, as serious Christians, we want to vote with our, our Catholic conscience, our Christian conscience. And the very same day Roe versus Wade, the 22nd of January, was commemorating the Democrats. I have to give them their due because they said, we're the party of abortion. Okay, well, what did they say? On Roe versus Wade's uh, anniversary, he said, we'll appoint pro-abortion judges and we'll make you pay for abortions. So what I'm saying to you, I'm being uh, direct. When you vote for a Democrat president that's running, whether it's Biden or whoever gets in, you're voting to fund abortions and you're voting to make sure that we don't get any pro-life judges on the Supreme Court. Now, I'm only telling you this because now you're culpable. Everybody here listening, you now know the situation. You've got one side that says we're for life, and the other side is we're going to kill the unborn. Now, if you don't believe me, read the platforms of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, and you'll see that I am right on this. Now, I think I have Father Murr on. Father Murr, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you today? You know, Terry, I almost didn't join you. Oh, okay. What happened? <laughs> I'm I'm sitting no well, I'm sitting here in my chapel yeah. thinking I've got all this time and I started praying. Yeah, well that's a it's, good thing. It's one of the few it's one of the few times I have recently I have been lost in wondering contemplation. <laughs> I love it. Well <laughs> Father Murr, thanks I for I didn't I, I was paying no attention to the time <laughs> until I got the, the call from your assistant, but here I am. Oh well God love you. Father, I asked you to come on today to talk about the seven sacraments seven sacraments of the church to kind of give a fundamental teaching, but I want to just set the stage because because you're going to be talking about a book I have in my hand. I'm showing those on YouTube called These Are the Sacraments by Fulton Sheen. But I'd like to just give a, a little uh, one sentence, one paragraph on the sacraments that I think are so important because we as Catholics sometimes have got had had amnesia where we had forgotten some of the most, most fundamental teachings of the church. So check this out. The seven sacraments are efficacious signs of grace instituted by Christ and entrusted to the church by which divine life, right, the life of God, is dispensed to us. The visible rites by which the sacraments are celebrated signify, make present the graces proper to each sacrament. This covers all the sacraments. They bear fruit in those who receive them with the required disposition. Well, Father Murr, I I opened up that statement because... We're going to talk about the seven sacraments, and I think right now in our church, with only 20% of the Catholics showing up to receive Holy Communion and to go into Holy Mass on Sundays, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so, maybe we, we just don't have a good understanding of uh, baptism and all the seven sacraments, because if we did, it, it seems to me that we'd have more people participating if they had a encounter with Christ in the sacraments. Am I on to something? I think you're on to everything. Oh, no. I think that's that's exactly right. The the uh, it, it's a ama- it amazes me. Tell me uh, the the lack of catechesis, mm. the lack of catechesis of yeah. uh, the people don't know just basic yeah. catechism, and uh, you know I I, I was uh, I was pastor of <clears throat> two churches in in New York City. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, both of both of which had a had a school. Yeah. And I would go in to, to talk to the kids in in eighth grade, seventh grade, sixth grade. Nobody had any idea of anything. I, I mean, I mean it. Wow. Of anything. Uh, um, they didn't. They had no idea that there were three persons in God. Really? No idea that there were. That, seriously. And this is after years and years and years of quote unquote Catholic education. Wow. Uh, it's it's a it's a shame. It's a shame. But I started. Uh, I, I got from Father Fezio from mm-hmm. from Ignatius Press their their new series uh, uh, on, on catechism. Mm-hmm. Their new catechisms. I can't remember exactly. I think it was Life of Grace. I might be wrong. I'm I'm, I'm not sure. But they were fantastic. Mm-hmm. And we started our kids just memorizing. They don't have to memorize the entire thing, but memorizing some points: the Ten Commandments, the Seven Sacraments, the Laws of the Church. Sure their prayers, etc. Mm-hmm. 
these and 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 all of the teachers were telling me, no, children can't they can't memorize any longer. Baloney. They, 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 I said, well, when did when I said when did that happen? <laughs> they lost their they, they lost their power to memorize. When did that happen? Are you kidding me? Yeah. These kids were great, and once they started knowing something, they participated more fully. I would always engage the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders and fifth graders sure. in in discussions of practical problems. Right? Okay. Why do, Why did I do that? Because at our dinner table at home, my mother and father would ask all of us what we learned in school that day. Excellent. Right? These were common. Everybody was involved in the conversation, and my father and mother would both propose problems mm-hmm. to what we to what we were talking about. And ask us to solve them. That's great. Well, what would you do in this case? What would you do in that case? And it was fantastic. Oh yeah. And the catechism, and the catechism was right there for many answers of many things. Sure. So, but the point was, you had to have something inside before it could come out. What we're what we what we were doing for years in, in in schools, I saw, we're asking children, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade. What do you think about this? What do you think about X? What do you think about Y? What do you mean, what do they think about it? <laughs> You've got to put something in exactly. before they can think about it. It's sort of like asking, can you, can you explain to me this, this equation? But, and I haven't taken time for you to memorize the, 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 what numbers are. Sure. Uh, or, 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 or the timetables. Or, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Anyway, when these kids knew something they had it memorized then we could start applying it and it became fun absolutely father we got to take a quick break i hear father hang on we got a quick break coming we're going to be talking about it's time to rediscover the sacred through the seven sacraments and that's what cardinal sarah said in his book the day is now far spent i have father charles murr on the line we're talking about the seven sacraments of the catholic church we'll have much more to inspire you Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Jesse Romero. Join me on a pilgrimage of faith and discovery to Poland for the 100th year anniversary of the birth of St. John Paul II in May of 2020. Together we'll experience the faith, beauty, and culture of Poland and become imbibed with the spirit of John Paul II. We'll visit the town of Wadowice, where John Paul was born, and the city of Krakow, where he was ordained and later became bishop. We'll also travel to Jasnogora and visit Our Lady of Czestochowa, And we'll have a chance to venerate the original image of the merciful Jesus at St. Faustina's convent and the city that St. Maximilian Kolbe built for the Immaculata. Finally, we'll pay a visit to Auschwitz, where St. Maximilian Kolbe was martyred. This is a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to worship and discover your own faith at places where St. John Paul II grew in his own love for our Lord. For more information or how to join this pilgrimage, visit my website at jesseromero.com. Sirach 1124 says, Do not say I am self-sufficient. What harm can come to me now? According to St. Catherine of Siena, presumption is like vermin burrowing at the root of the tree of our soul. If we do not uproot it with great care and humility, it will eventually destroy the soul. May God keep us from all presumption of mind and heart and realize that we depend on Him for everything. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 
800-242-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. Father Charles Murr is filling in for Jesse today. We're using a term that uh, Cardinal Robert Seurat says in his book, The Day is Now Far Spent. It's time for us to rediscover the sacred. Well, what is sacred? The seven sacraments. And how do we do that? Father Murr, before the break, was just explaining how young people at his parishes in New York just didn't know anything about the faith. But when he was teaching them the faith, they loved it. And Father, isn't that the message we have today, that they, that we can't just compromise and say, oh, it's not, the, kid, the kids can't memorize it, the kids can't learn this stuff. We're, 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 that, that was the old school. No, this is what's actually introducing people to Christ and you got to have information. You got to have catechesis because without that, how do you meet the person of Jesus? That's right. We we used to, there. There was an old Latin maxim that that said, "Nemo dat quod non habit." One cannot give what one does not have. <laughs> I've used that one. Yep, sure. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it's quite simple. And you've got to. You've got, they have to. When when these kids, especially in catechism, yeah. started acquiring some knowledge, mm-hmm. it was magnificent oh, yeah. how they could apply it oh, yeah. to different situations. Just great. But you've got to. You've got to. You've got to give something to them. They have to. They have to. Yeah. You know, how can you expect somebody to know anything if you've never taught him or her to read? Exactly. Right? If you, if, 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 there. There. That, that's what I'm talking about. So the catechism is 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 essentially important. It's very very important. Uh, for for these kids, for example, I remember I said, "Well, what have you been doing?" This is fourth and fifth and sixth grade. What have you been doing? Well, we've been reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I, I said, "Well, that, I mean, you know, that's, that's wonderful. very good, you read yeah." The Bible, but 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 the point is, if if you don't know what what you're reading. Um, what are you supposed to derive from it? What did the eunuch anyway, say? Yeah. yeah, he says, you know, yeah, the Acts of the it, Apostles. Same thing. Yes. Give me a I break. Have no one to explain it. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> Father, are you are we ready to go into a baptism? Since you set the stage that we have a lack of catechesis, and there's no question about that. Can you and are you? We're t- I have the book Fulton Sheen. These are the sacraments, and I know a lot of your material you use from Fulton Sheen. So, can we jump into what is the sacrament of baptism? Absolutely. I steal only from the best of sources. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and job. Sheen is the best. Sheen I agree. Is, is just, he's magnificent. So let's, let's, let's do this. Let's Tell do me. this. Uh, let's define, yeah. remember, let's, let's define our yeah, sure. So what is, what is the sacrament? We're talking, before we get into there being seven of them, yes. what is a sacrament? Excellent. And, it's, and, and, the, and the, you read it before. You I read did. a very good uh, yeah. expl- explanation. That's a little bit more than I would give, and I would give this, just the one that we learned the in the Baltimore, Baltimore Catechism. Catechism. You bet. Right? Yeah. All right. A, a sacrament is an outward sign yep. instituted by Christ to give grace. Simple. That's what a sacrament is. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. So what is, what is, what is that? The, there are seven of these signs that Christ... Here, here's the thing, too. Tell me. Christ is using, Christ is using when, when in his life on earth, He's using these signs from nature, things that already exist, mm-hmm. and making them holy. So many of these things have been used for unholy purposes. He's now going to make them holy, and he takes them as signs. What are these, these signs that he's going to be using? Well, he's going to be using bread. He's going to be using wine, oil, water, mm-hmm. salt, all of, all of the uh, uh, physical contact. Hands on head. Yep. Right. All of these these signs, things that you can see, things that you can see. All right. So, uh, and and what is grace? I love defining grace this way. It can be defined. I mean, there are books written on on grace, and there are disputes on grace. And the, I look at grace as friendship, wow. God's friendship, mm-hmm. the love of God, the love of God put into man, into our hearts. His friendship with us, all right? Just and and Sheen starts out. He says, just as there are seven rays of the spectrum in color, there are seven sacraments in the church. Mm-hmm. And he says, that, well, first of all, the sacraments are seven in number. Five of which, the first five, are pertaining to your individual life. The last two pertaining to your social life. Mm-hmm. 
And what I, I think what, what's, what, what Sheen does beautifully in the, in the sacraments is he's making them just logical. Yeah. What the sacraments are is God's life in you. And he's going to say that they, 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 they simply uh, agree with the physical life. We've got the spiritual life and the physical life. The spiritual life is going to follow suit on what the, on what the, the, uh, the, the spiritual life is going to follow suit to what the physical life is. So you've got the five conditions for the physical life. Mm-hmm. Here are five conditions for the physical life. Mm-hmm. I must be born. I think we'd agree with that. Amen. I must grow to maturity. You agree with that? I must be nourished, number three. I must nourish myself. Four, I must heal my wounds. Five, I must drive out traces of disease. Social, six and seven are social. As a member of society, because as an individual, fine, I'm I'm an individual, but I also belong to a society. There's none of us, no man is an island, right? right. None of us is, is completely alone, although there are a lot of people who think they are and a lot of people who wish they were at different times in life, but we're not. We live in society. And to society, society demands that there be a, a propagation of, of, the, of, of the human species. And seven, there must be government. Uh, my mind went back to when I was thinking of this. Uh, remember Lord of the Flies? Sure. Remember that? The, the book we all had to read, I think. Long time ago. As sophomores, anyway, and sophomores in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, the What happens when there isn't government and what kind of, and, and there, there's going to be a government anyway, it's, right? It's part of us to organize and to live together under a system of laws. Whether they be good laws or bad laws, it's just there. That government is very important. So let's go back to these. I must be born in the physical in the physical world. Mm-hmm. That corresponds to baptism. Right. What is baptism? Baptism is being born in, in, in the spiritual sense. Yep. Two, I must grow to maturity. What is that? that that's in, in the physical sense. I have to grow. What is that in the spiritual sense? It's confirmation. Right. Confirmation is maturing, maturing the faith. Three, I must nourish myself. What is that? Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. Four, I must heal my wounds. Penance, in the the spiritual sense, penance or confession. Mm -hmm. Five, drive out traces of disease. Extreme unction or the sacrament of the sick. Mm -hmm. Six, the continuation of the human species marriage Mm -hmm. Uh, for for those who have any any sort of problem with the with there being more than more than two sexes and uh, this and the other (laughs) the the only way that you can you can have children in natural by the natural order is with a man and a woman and we we like to think that that should be in marriage as a matter of fact even when there is no religion in society, even the, the communists who are officially atheists, whether it be in China, whether it be in Russia before them, or, or those who in the 1920s and 1930s uh, um, promulgated free love uh, without getting married. Well, they lived marriages anyway. Right. This is what it came down to. They actually lived marriages. So marriage, the, the six sacrament is marriage and seven there must be government what is government holy orders that you have the priesthood the the bishops the pope this is the government of the church and it's the government in the spiritual life wow so what what what's what's beautiful about the the whole scheme of things and especially the way fulton sheen presents it is we go right according to life are the sacraments, and I think when people understand that, they become real. Yeah, the sacraments become real. If you don't understand that, you're saying, "Where are they coming from? And why is this necessary? Why is that?" How many? I've heard people say to me, "Well, I don't have to go to communion. Hmm. I don't have. I don't have to go to confession." 
you know, you don't have to be, you, know, you don't have to be married to be a good person. I, I hear all these things. Yep. It's, 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 they're, but they're, they're missing the boat. They're sure. missing the boat. The, you, the spiritual life has its order just as the physical life right. requires and has its order. That's right. Requires an answer from us. All right. This is, this is where we're going. Uh, all of these are wonderful. Uh, where should we begin? Well, Father, let me just bring this up. That Bishop Sheen, is what sure. Father's quoting, is in his Life is Worth Living audio series, and I do have that on an MP3 disc. It's 50 half-hour shows. It's on the commandments, the sacraments. It's the best catechesis I can give to somebody. For 40 years, I've been shouting from the rooftops to get this into people's hands. So if you want a copy, call 877-526-2151. Father, I just wanted to cover a couple things on baptism and get your response regarding the fruits of the sacrament. Here's what I have researched on the fruits of baptism. Number one, the remission of original sin. We can get into that. Number two, the birth in new life by which man becomes an adoptive son of the Father, a member of Christ, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. Number three, now these are fruits of baptism. An incorporation into the church, the body of Christ, a participation into the priesthood of Christ. Number four, the imprinting on a soul of an indelible spiritual sign, the character which consecrates the baptized person for Christian worship. Because of this character, and this is something people, you got to remember, baptism cannot be repeated. For example, somebody comes into the Catholic Church and they're maybe conditionally baptized. That's if we don't know if they have been baptized, we do it conditionally. If it already is baptized, that's fine. They, they got baptized. If not, then they're going to be baptized today. But, Father, these fruits of the sacrament of baptism, the remission of original sin, can, when we come back, I guess the break's going to come up in a minute. So when I come back, I'd like to ask you to give us uh, the uh, the remission of original sin because we have people in the church even priests, even lay people saying, well, we don't have original sin anymore because um, that's old school and uh, we're all immaculately conceived, as Fulton Sheen would say to people who would say something like that. That's not true. But I want to make sure we have a good grasp of original sin and how we still have the effects of original sin in our life and how do we overcome those effects. I'd like you, Father, to kind of talk about overcoming that what baptism does for the soul and that mark that is put on a soul. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. Jesse's out of town. He'll be back next week. Father Charles Murrow's fitting in on uh, for the show for Friday. We come back, we'll talk more on the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church, specifically the fruits of the sacraments, especially baptism, when we come back here on the Terry and Jesse show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Don't turn that dial we want to inspire you more to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. This is Matthew Arnold for Virgin Most Powerful Radio. This March, VMPR, in association with the Catholic Resource Center, will be hosting a special conference for the Adoramus Society. Adoramus at the Triduum, a conference on the spirituality of the Triduum liturgies, featuring speakers Father Joseph Fessio, Dr. Anthony Lillis, and Christopher Carstens, addressing such topics as developing a liturgical spirituality, the spirituality of Holy Thursday, the spirituality of Good Friday, and the spirituality of the Paschal Vigil and Easter season. It all takes place March 14th, 2020 at the historic Sacred Heart Chapel at 381 West Center Street, Covina, California, 91723. You can register online at vmpr.org or call now at 877-526-2151 to reserve your seat today for Adoramus at the Triduum. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, 
a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877 877- 543-3871 because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 888- Five two six two one five one. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. Father Murr's filling in for Jesse. I just want to remind you, uh, tomorrow, Saturday in San Francisco is the March West Coast March. I would, if you're in the area, I would love to see you up there to support that march. Um, Father Charles Murr's on the phone with us talking about the seven sacraments. And before the break, I asked him about some of the fruits of the sacrament of baptism, especially the remission of original sin. Father, how would you explain that to someone in the church who might not have had good catechesis? How do you approach that to tell somebody that they have concupiscence or they have this fallen nature and what original sin does for the soul? Well, it seems to me so obvious that we have fallen nature. You think? That I, I, I would, I would, I would almost try to try to explain how we don't have one after after I baptism. Get it. Sure, you know, sure. the but but the, the 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 original sin is simply talking about the first sin of Adam and Eve. Yep. Their disobedience mm-hmm. in the Garden of Eden. That disobedience caused a condition to enter into the human into the human condition. And this is very important to understand uh, because later on, when we understand, when we look into the person of Christ and the, and the mission of the Blessed Mother in the entry of Christ, the Logos, into the world, it's going to, make, it's going to be very important. Man was not created, man and woman. When I say man, I'm, of course, talking about woman sure. also, right? Sure. Man and woman. But man was not created with a fallen nature. Man was not created to get sick. Man was not created to be miserable. Man was not created to die. This was not part of the plan. We get into... I don't want to get all the way into it. We can go no, into no, just a summary. Yeah. And everything else. Yeah, let's, pretty let's natural. Try to keep it, yeah. keep it easy, all right? Yeah, simple. All right. We said on, on a, a couple, a few weeks back, we yeah. were talking about love. Mm-hmm. We were talking about love. Yes. And we were talking about the need that love be free. Right. It ha- love has to be free. Freedom is involved in love. Therefore, we are free. We're free beings. Mm-hmm. And in that, we are made in the nature of God. We are, we are made in the image of God, not the nature of God, the image of God, in that we're free. So that freedom was put to a test. You have to test things. You either, you're free if you have two options, right? At least two options. Right. If you only have one option, you're not free. The option was given to man who was born in a, in a, in a, 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 a perfect state, why do I say that that's important to understand? Because later on, thousands of years later, mm-hmm. when we talk about the Logos, the Word of God coming into human history, mm-hmm. it is going to, that Word of God, who is the second person of the Blessed Trinity, is going to enter through a woman right. created the same way as Eve was created before the fall. Wow. Yep. Okay. That's why that's why this is very important. So Eve was created the way we were meant to be. Adam was created the way we were meant to be in that in that perfect state, that happy state, that state of grace. Right? Got it. They were given a test and as we know, 
I think even those who don't know their catechism know that we failed the test. Yeah, you think? Our first parents, our first parents failed the test. Right. Uh, what was it? What was it? The uh, uh, I, I I just read something the other day that I hadn't heard since the time I was a kid. It was the uh, you know that there's no mention of an apple mm-hmm. in the in the uh, in in Eden. Eden, you know that that there was an apple and they ate of right. the apple. Right. There's no mention of that. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I think it's Augustine when talking about this, he's stealing pears. Mm-hmm. He makes a reference to the pear, right? The 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 the, the, the fruit of the, the in the in the garden. That was the fruit, the forbidden fruit. Right? right. But anyway, what was it? How did it go? It wasn't uh, Terry. Help me here. I'm trying to help you right now, Father. But uh, he, it, was, it, was, it you, wasn't the pear. It wasn't the pear in the tree. It was the pear on the ground. Ah, I get it. I get it. That, that, hey, that was it. I got it. Father. Anyway. Father, let me ask you this because we yeah. got a couple. We got another segment after this, but I want to ask you this because you've studied this all your life, and you just kind of at the beginning talked about baptism, and then you went to confirmation, and I want to get to confirmation, because it seems, Father, that we really don't understand. I mean, when I was confirmed, I became a soldier of Christ, and we don't even use that language anymore, unfortunately, and I think that's a a problem, in my humble opinion, but I want to get your take on the fruits of the sacrament, and then what what is, first of all, what is the sacrament of confirmation, Father? Uh, Maturity. Yeah, there you go. It's maturity. It's maturity. Quite simply, it's maturing in in the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. It's growing. Right. And again, that goes right back to naturally, this is what we do. Yes. In the womb, we're growing. When we're born in in the world, we grow. Right? Uh, And it's maturing in the faith. Right. It's coming to know who we are and taking our place as, as adults. There's something, too, about confirmation. Tell me. Confirmation, confirmation, uh, let, let me go. Let me go just a little bit back sure. into its history. Yeah, that's confirmation. Good. We we have made confirmation uh, something that happens uh, 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 when you're 15 or 16 years old mm-hmm. or in high school. Yeah, and it's it's sort of like it's you know what confirmation has become graduating from all religious training. It's true, Father. That's the practical aspect. <laughs> it, of That's what confirmation. Is. And now now go on your way, and we'll see you later when you get married. Yeah. You know, that's it's quite unfortunate. Yes, the the Eastern Church and our own church at the beginning had confirmation was given to infants. That's right. And if you would talk to any people of South America, Mexico, in, yeah, in the in, our, in the church, they were confirmed at two or three months of age. Yep. Most people were until recently. They changed it to yep. to to more accommodate with what is happening in the church, the preparation. But it's very closely associated with baptism, being born, with confirmation, maturing, growing, which you're doing immediately after you're born. Yep. And three, Eucharist, the Holy Eucharist. Those were all given to infants mm-hmm. they, to infants in the early church. Because they, 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 these are the first; these are the things that are necessary for life. Got we've it. changed them a little bit, a little bit more, and we've we've uh, spaced them, and that's that, that's fine. You can do that; that's wonderful. But we've lost a little bit of the idea of maturing. Yeah. That, that confirmation is supposed to be. Got it, Father. I want to move on to the Holy Eucharist, which is the source and summit of the Christian life. And let's be honest: most Catholics do not even believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. So I'd like to talk about what we actually believe and how the Eucharist increases our communion with Christ. So tell us about the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. All right. You are what you eat. Yeah, that's, that's what Gene says. <laughs> he says yep. All right. Well, that's, we had a copy of that in, in, in my mom and dad's library. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the... The, the Eucharist is, sim- is, is this. I was going to say simply. It's not simple. No, it's, it is simple and it's not simple. Right, both. The, 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 just go back to, to chapter 6 of St. John. Amen. If you want to understand what it is. Our Lord is looking at his 12 apostles and he's looking at his disciples. All right? Mm-hmm. Those disciples numbered probably in the 70s. All right? Mm-hmm. They're all following him. And he turns and he says to them, you have nothing to do with the Son of Man himself, with me, Jesus, 
And listen to this, not with what you know about your Catholic faith. Forget you know anything about the sacraments. You're listening to this man who's impacted you completely by his miracles, by his wisdom, what he's talking, Mm -hmm. and how he's living. And he turns and he says to you, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, I have nothing to do with you and you have nothing to do with me. Wow. That's powerful. Wow. Uh, just, just, Just imagine the impact that that had on those men. These are not stupid men. Right. And and the majority of them said the, he's out of his mind. This man has lost his mind, and they refused to take one further step with him. Wow! They turned, they turned their backs on him and walked away. And our Lord, without he's not explaining anything yet. Right. He he turns and he says to his twelve, "Would you like to catch up with those?" <laughs> you want to catch up with them? You can still catch up with them. They're not far. You can still leave. But I'm not changing what I just said. Yep. Right? Imagine that moment. Imagine that moment. Now, these are men who have left everything, and they're following this man. And all of a sudden, the majority of the disciples have said, this man is out of his mind. Right. Peter, Peter, the first pope speaks up and, and says basically what he, he says this, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. Right I said now. that what, today. What, what, is, what, is, what is he saying? Exactly. He's saying, in essence, Lord, we don't understand what in the world you're talking about. <laughs> we don't, we don't, I, I have no idea what you're saying, but we've come to believe that you are the Son of God. And if you're saying this, we'll accept it in faith. We, wow. we don't know where else to turn. We don't know where else to turn. And he didn't understand from that moment until the Last Supper what Christ was talking about. There you go. And they, rem- and they remained with him and became catechized, didn't they? they yes, they did. They more and more and more. Until the Last Supper, until the Last Supper, if you can imagine this, at table, when our Lord takes bread, and says, this is my body, and takes a chalice of wine and says, this is my blood. You can imagine, just imagine Peter, and all of the rest of them too, the sigh of relief that they gave. Because this is what he was talking about before. Mm -hmm. Wow, Father. what he meant. Awesome. We got a quick yeah. break. I hear music. This is awesome about the Eucharist. And then and then if we can run right in to the sacrament of penance, reconciliation, you know, John 20 is right there in the Bible where the priest got the power to forgive sins. We're going to come back with Father Charles Murr. We're talking about the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church and how they give us grace, the life of God in us. We'll be back with much more on the Terry and Jesse Show. Hello, this is Terry Barber with the Terry and Jesse Show. I'm here with Gil already. He is the president of the Catholic Men's Fellowship of California. Gil, we got a men's conference coming up. I appreciate you having me on, Terry, to share about our Rise Up, O Men of God, the Church for You Does Wait, Super Saturday Conference, and it's Saturday, March 28th in Covina at Sacred Heart Catholic Church, 344 West Workman Street in Covina, California. Who are the speakers? We have some great speakers lined up. We have Steve Ruda, former captain of the L.A. Fire Department. He's dynamic. Mm -hmm. He's energetic. He will really keep the conference moving. We have Monsignor Tim Nichols, the pastor from St. John Vianney. He's He's dynamic. Mark McElrath, Father Darren Merlino, a trained exorcist. Charlie Eshelman, a past Navy SEAL. We have Deacon Omar Uriati, who is from our parish, St. Louis de Marillac, and Father Joseph Shea. And I'll be there myself, giving a little plug for Virgin Most Powerful. You can reach us at catholicmen.org. Tickets are on sale there. Just follow the link. Tickets are on sale at eventbrite.com. 
Just be sure to get your tickets now till the 31st for $35 and $45 after that till the day of the conference. Sign up for this men's conference. Call Gil at 626-841-9090. I'll be sure to answer your call and give you all the information you need for the Rise Up, O Men of God, for you, the Church Does Wait conference. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate your help. God bless you. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse show. I have Father Charles Murr with me, but I also have a phone call. And uh, it's regarding Gil Alvaretti. He's promoting the Super Saturday Men's Conference. You just heard the commercial about it. And, Gil, I want you to come on and tell our our listeners a little bit about what's going on with the Men's Conference. Welcome. Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate it. You know, it's uh, Catholic Men's Fellowship of California. We Mm -hmm. throw a conference every year. Mm -hmm. And this year it's going to be at Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Covina. Good. And we have some great speakers lined up. They're, They're going to encourage the men to be deeper followers of Christ, right. renewing their minds and transforming their hearts Excellent. towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And how can people go to this conference? What, what's a website they can go to? They can go to our website, catholicmen.org. Go to catholicmen.org. They can follow the link there, um, and it'll lead them right to Eventbrite, and they can purchase tickets. And we even have a, 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 uh, a part there that you can donate a ticket. All you have to do is put seminarian in for the name because we have seven several seminarians that are coming uh from our seminary in uh camarillo awesome and uh they need to be paid for as well so you, you we got do have sponsorships to, that you can sign up for but it's going to be a great saturday conference you're going to be there sharing with them in a little absolutely. bit absolutely and uh we're just real excited all right well gil we keep running that commercial starting today so people if you're mom dad get to you know get your husband to get to a men's conference That'll be at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church at 344 West Workman Avenue, Covina, on the 28th of March. Gil, thanks for joining us real quickly on this message. Thanks, thank Gil. you, Terry, and thank you, Father Murr, for uh, all you do. You bet. Father Murr. Thank I'm, you. Yeah, I'm coming back with the uh, penance on uh, the Sacrament of uh, Reconciliation. We call it penance. And I know that the Gospel of John Chapter 20, if we just read, the Father sent the Son, Jesus, with the authority. Jesus, in turn, sent the apostles with the authority. Here's what John 20, 21 to 23 tells us. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I laugh because I asked Catholics, Father, how many of you know where the Bible, the sacrament of penance is in? And they go, is it in there? I didn't know that. So, Father, why don't I get your take and what Fulton Sheen has to say about a great sacrament of penance? What is it and why is it important for us today? Okay, let me just, and let me, if, you, if you will permit me just to finish a thought from before. Oh, right? fine. All, Go for all, it. All I, wanted, all I want to do is, is leave you with this idea about the Eucharist. Okay. The sigh of relief, the sigh of relief mm-hmm. at the Last Supper when they understood that eating his body and drinking his blood was this. Uh, mm-hmm. And it wasn't. Chewing a, di- a finger or an right. arm or no. drinking his blood, right? Right, cannibalism, you know, no. But it, it, but it was, it was the same reality. That's why Christ never, never changed it. He never explained it because it is the very same reality. And, and those words, this is my body, which will be 
this is right now, right. At the Last Supper Thursday, what will be tomorrow, Friday, wow. on the cross. Right. It's beautiful. And, All fa- right, now, and, and Father, minute. before you go on to the next one, you did mention that yeah. many of them wanted to, well, you know, are you going to leave me too? And he said, no, you have the words of eternal life. And I ask our Catholics who are listening, if you have relatives or friends that have left the church, ask them that question about why did you leave the Eucharist? If they've left to go to a Protestant church where they have a symbol, I mean, why would you give up the real body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ? When I ask people that question, they go, well, I didn't know I left that. Well, that's exactly the point. They they didn't know what they left. So many people leave the Catholic Church not knowing what the church teaches. That's why I'm and that's why I had Father Merck on today to give us some summaries of what Fulton Sheen has taught in his book. These are the sacraments. So, Father, we got a little bit of time to talk about penance. What's up on penance? It's it's, it's this is this is a marvelous sacrament. Mm-hmm. It's a marvelous sacrament. It's asking forgiveness. Of your sins. There you go. Asking forgiveness of your sins. And not only asking forgiveness, receiving it. Amen. Receiving the forgiveness. Right? Because when those when your sins are forgiven, when they're forgiven, listen to this. This is absolutely beautiful. I um, really think it's beautiful. Yeah. It moves me always. Good. In the mind of God, if you will, in the mind of God, there is no memory of you having sinned. That's what St. Margaret Mary said when they asked him uh, about, right. yep, beautiful, Father, that's a true statement. Say it one more right. time, because that, I think that, people that, don't that know God, that. God, God's, God's forgiveness is total. Yep. It is complete. It is total. <laughs> God erases erases the sin. Yep. It's done. It's finished. And you say, well, what about purgatory? Don't we have to just make up for all the sin? Yes, we do. That's because right. we're the ones who are carrying the effects, the, the, the rest of the sins. But it's not that God is calling us to that. This is going to be just, it, it's a complicated, a little bit more complicated mm-hmm. than that. But it's, the, 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 the forgiveness of God is total, total. Right. The, the, the sin did not exist, never existed. It's completely forgiven. This is marvelous. This is absolutely marvelous. I don't know why anyone would walk away from this. Why would you spend four hundred dollars an hour? Yeah, he's gonna go there <laughs> with a psychi- on a psychiatrist yeah. couch. Yeah, trying to be forgiven of your sin when all it takes is to kneel down in front of a validly ordained priest and give him your confession and receive God's pardon. It's it's incredible, and you know. Tell me. Say, well, why do I have to tell my why do I have to tell my sins to a priest? I'll tell you why. Because it's very important that you enunciate and hear yourself say what you did. Yeah. It's very important that this be expressed and that it be expressed to to Christ's minister. This is a man who's taking Christ's place at that time. You don't have to look at his life. Is he a holy man? Is he a wicked man? Is he a, it doesn't matter. At that moment, Christ is using him to take care of you, to forgive your sins. And when you say you can't understand why you have to tell that to, to one human being, are you kidding me? Have you turned on television lately? Mm-hmm. And people are talking about the most shameful things I- I- imaginable, yep. and they're telling audiences of millions of people, announcing it to millions of people. Right. It, it, and, and and we're ashamed to tell it to one person. Well said. You be kidding me. This is, well said. Right. And, well, and it's re, it's re, it's required because here's the thing. Tell me. To forgive to forgive your sin. I have to know what the sin is. Exactly. I have I have to hear it. Of course. Right. And I and I need to know that you are sincere, sincerely asking for forgiveness. Your 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 sincerity is real, right? It's not it's not it's not put on, and the sin is forgiven. This is this is magnificent. You know what? I'm I'm forgetting who it was. It wasn't Oscar Wilde, I think. Oh no no no, it was uh, oh another author. Give me a, a from the south of the United States. He was in Paris. Oh gosh, I don't know. But Father, while you're kicking oh, that, my God. let me just throw this in about yeah. the fruits of the sacrament. Uh, because yeah. I love the fruits, the reconciliation with God, the penitent recovers, sanctifying grace, the life of God is back in us, a reconciliation with the church, the remission of eternal punishment incurred 
by mortal sins? Yes, right. Remission of at least part of the temporal punishment resulting from sin. Here's another fruit. Peace and serenity of conscience and spiritual consolation. The last fruit, an increase of spiritual strength for the Christian battle. That's why if you haven't been to confession in a long time, I say a long time is a month, okay? Go to confession. Right. Father, we didn't get much to get to the others. We're going to have to do it another time because we're running out of, out of time here. But I will say this. Um, if people want to really get what Fulton Sheen teaches on the seven sacraments, get Bishop Sheen's Life is Worth Living on audio. It's 50 half-hour shows on a disc that we have. They can call 877 877- Five two six two one five one. Father, why don't you have, do you have anything else to say about penance yet? Uh, if not, because we're going to ask for your blessing. Your final yes. thoughts? Yes. Yes. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. The man who wrote a streetcar named Desire. Who was that? I don't. I don't know. Father, you got me. Well, all right. He he was in Paris, and he was he. That's where he he decided that he was going to answer the call to become a Catholic. He was not, uh, he was a, a nothing. Yeah, Tennessee Williams. And he went to, he, he went, Tennessee Williams. Yep. I met him in Rome. Oh I know God. the story. <laughs> Tennessee Williams, Tennessee Williams, uh, I can't believe I forgot his name. We met at the Low V restaurant. <laughs> That's Tennessee amazing. Tennessee Williams, Tennessee Williams walked, walked into a rectory in Paris and yeah. said to the priest, imagine this, after much thinking, he said, the priest said, what can I do for you? And he said, I want you to return my innocence. Wow. That's bad. That's so beautiful. Give me back my, give me back my innocence. That's powerful. Can you, can you do that? Yes. I think can. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. That is so beautiful, that Father. Beautiful? That is beautiful. Father, how about a blessing? Uh, can you give our listeners a priestly blessing, please? Absolutely. The blessing of Almighty God, Father. Son and Holy Ghost descend upon you and remain forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. We're going to have to continue the other sacraments and another segment. So thanks for joining us here on the Terry and Jesse show. Thank you, Terry. God bless. God bless. Up next, we've got Father, excuse me, Father, I'm already here. He is a father, Matt Arnold. He's coming up next for the happy hour. And uh, I want to thank all of our listeners. This is our second year anniversary in January for Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And, you know, we've been trying to teach people the faith with the fundamental teachings of the church, with charity and clarity. Yes, we get into some of the issues of the day, but we always want to give people hope in Jesus Christ because there's nowhere else to go. Yes, we have problems in our church right now, but you know what the solution is? Personal holiness. I want to recommend everyone to get Cardinal Robert Seurat's book, The Day Is Now Far Spent. I've been quoting from it for months and, um, you know, he makes a point that, you know, some people would like to see the church being transformed after the model of a modern democracy. In it, the government would in- be entrusted to the majority. But that would amount to making the church a human society and not the family of God founded by Jesus Christ. And so I, why do I say that? Well, think of what the cure of ours, St. John Vianney said, he, what he did. He was able to convert thousands of souls by spending time before the Blessed Sacrament, I would encourage you also, take time before Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. That's your consolation. Human people will always disappoint you, okay? But Jesus Christ will never disappoint you, especially in the Holy Eucharist. Take that time before him. That'll be your best time of the day. May God bless you. And I'm going to say, what state should you be living in? state of grace. What state shouldn't you be living in? State of mortal sin. How do you get out of mortal sin? Father just told us. Penance. Go to confession and receive the graces that are necessary to get to heaven. Because unless you do penance, you will not get to heaven. And that's our job here at Virgin Merit, Virgin Most Powerful Radio, is to get you to heaven. So may God bless you. And up next, again, Matt Arnold will be here. And he will inspire you to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. And as I say every day, full sheen ahead. And thank you so much for listening and supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. God bless you and your family. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to Thee, O Lord. 
Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.